I told my mother that I was gonna film a review for a book and then post it on the internet, but I don't think that she believed me or realized that I was being serious. Okay, so in the process of preparing for this review, I have realized that I am terrible at doing reviews. And so I'm gonna do a ton of them to get better at it because I want to review things. Okay, cool. So this is my first ever video. My name's Selena. Welcome to the first ever video. Um, and it's going to be a review for A Curse of Dark and Lonely. So my goal in um, doing this review, reviewing this book, is because people's tastes are so subjective and because there's different readers for different books, I wanted to give you some pretty objective information as well as what I liked and what I didn't like um, in order for you to see if this book aligns with your tastes. Um, and so let's just get into it. This book is a YA fairy tale retelling. It's a fantasy book. It is a retelling of Beauty and the Beast and it follows our protagonist Harper as she is taken in, taken from our world, the normal world, into this magical other realm in order to help the Beast character, the prince named Ren, um, break the curse that he is under and also the curse that he and his land and people are under. So right off the bat, the thing that drew me into this book was the atmosphere. The atmosphere is very fairy tale esque It feels like you have been brought from your world into this other realm. The magic is not necessarily in your face, but it, it does feel magical in a way. It feels enchanted because it is. On that note though, the world building is very light and the magic is not a magic system. It is not it is very soft. It is not explained to great detail. It is really not, um, it's not that kind of fantasy. So if you're looking for intricately built worlds and complex magic systems, this book is not it. The, the setting is very much a setting rather than something that you will learn a lot about and it becomes kind of, kind of like another element to the story that you have to learn, learn about and kind of understand in order to understand the book. It's very simple and easy to grasp. So the pro of this book not being bogged down by extensive world building and a hard magic system that doesn't really play a role in the overall structure of the story very much is that you get to focus on the fast paced and very fun plot and the characters of this novel. And we have some great characters in this novel. Harper is an amazing protagonist. She is feisty. She is fun. She is funny. She is smart. Harper was just kind of a joy to follow with this book. She was the best protagonist I could have asked for with this book. She handled everything with such such grace, I guess. I, I really I really enjoyed her. I really enjoyed her. That being said though, Harper I felt was the most well-developed character of the story. The side characters were not very developed. The other two main main protagonist the other perspective is Ren and he Ren has a personality he's just not quite as fun to follow as Harper and I don't think he's quite as fleshed out as her I, I knew who Ren was I thought he was I thought he was I thought I mean I thought he had a personality but I mean he's he's not quite as fleshed out as Harper and same with Grey. Grey I thought was not as fleshed out as either of the other two. I still like Grey and Ren like I think they were good characters they're just Harper was clearly the crowning jewel of this book. Um, the other side characters that we meet we don't really get to find too much about them. They are you know they're kind of basic and we don't get to find out too much about their motivations or they don't affect the plot too much but you know. That being said though one of the things that a lot of people really love about this book is that Harper has cerebral palsy and she is a fantasy protagonist in YA which you don't see too many fantasy protagonists with cerebral palsy. This was clearly well researched by Bridget Kemmerer. Um, this was a really I thought a really nice portrayal and a really cool thing to see. It doesn't define Harper is in that Harper has no other attributes but cerebral palsy and you can't say that you can't even care about her you can't even say that this is a good representation of a person um it is something that she deals with 
every single day. Harper is Harper, not in spite of cerebral palsy, not because of it, but along with it. Harper has a lot of things and cerebral, having cerebral palsy happens to be one of those things. Um, cerebral palsy is something that, you know, she does deal with, but it's not, it's not, it doesn't make her incapable of being a great protagonist. And I thought that that was really great to see um, executed so well in this book. Okay, so moving on from characters, I thought the plot was fun and fast for most of the story. It was quite simplistic and at times predictable, which made this book drag a bit in the middle, like three fourths, two thirds of the way through. There was, there was a, a moment when it dragged because the plot is so simple. There's not a lot going on. This is a plot that focuses mainly on the romance. And if that is not your thing, I would steer clear from this book because there's not a lot of intrigue or there's not a lot of plot other than the romance. It's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. It's fairy tales have romance kind of at the core of them as a genre. So that's what you're going to get with this. That being said, while I enjoyed the romance and I'm not a romance reader, I don't like a lot of like, I don't, I don't care about romance that much, especially in a fantasy. Like I want my fantasy to be fantasy and plot driven and I don't really care about like two people getting together all that much. This one I liked how it was done and I was into the book and the plot enough to really enjoy the romance. However, this romance is divisive. A lot of people don't love the, the love interest and I see why because he is a bit bland and he can be kind of kind of a jerk sometimes but not like a he's not like a he's like a minor kind of jerk. He's not like not like crazy levels of jerk if you know what I mean. While I thought the overall execution of the romance was good there was a little bit of one-sided insta-love with one of these characters and I don't like insta-love <laughs> at all. I always notice it and this one wasn't an extreme case of it but it was it was a little bit of one and I was a little bit annoyed by it but if you can overlook it or if you read it and disagree with me then it won't bother you. On the topic of insta-love though, this one was done a bit differently because I think there was kind of a gender reversal in, in my experience. Um, usually with insta-love there's a girl protagonist who's kind of immediately into this guy for no good reason and she kind of forgets about everything um, and doesn't really react to the action happening around her that she should be reacting to. And that I can say does not happen. In fact, the insta-love wasn't even on her side of things, which I thought was very interesting, but it's still pretty fast. I'm going to move on to the spoiler section now. I hope this review was helpful in deciding whether this is the right book for you to pick up or not. Um, and if you're not staying for the spoilers, I will hopefully see you in another video soon. Bye. Um, and if you're staying for a spoiler chat, let's get into it okay i freaking loved oh my god i freaking loved harper i thought she was so funny and like when she oh my god i was like annotating every time harther like <laughs> harther every time harper like spoke i was like lol <laughs> I, I was like writing it in the books because she was just so funny and she was like oh my god I loved how she came into this world and like just immediately starts hitting men with poles like that was hilarious that was exactly the reaction that like she should have had and I loved it um I also loved how she um <sighs> What was it? Oh, she kept trying to escape. I really enjoyed that aspect of her character because I think that that is I, I love that she wasn't <laughs> content to try and escape just once. I, I love that she tried to do it more than once because it felt realistic to me. It felt like exactly what, what I would have done if I were in the situation. It felt that she was right not to trust these people like immediately. <laughs> I mean, I really enjoyed Harper. I thought Harper was a great protagonist and that is, those are some of the reasons why. Oh my gosh, my notes are coming up. A lot of people have problems with Ren and Grey and Harper's like love triangle thing because they liked Grey better or whatever. I didn't fully get that. At first I totally did. The first scene where she like hit him with a pole and he was like 
you what now i was i was like oh no i'm gonna ship the wrong ship because ren i mean like ren comes off really boring <laughs> and he's not but like i didn't think so i mean i have heard that complaint for him but i didn't think he was boring but like he was in his first scene like my gosh the man like <laughs> He just like was just chilling there while Gray was like fighting this girl and I was like and they were like bickering and I was like oh well I'm gonna ship them now because they just seem to have a better connection while Ren is just like sitting there brooding like here we go um it's gonna be a boring love interest and but I mean eventually I got on board with Ren. Ren's problem though is he's kind of kind of a jerk a lot like she there were so many times and I was like Ren I was just starting to like you and then you do you do this and then you do this and ruin it I can't even think of like one of the things I mean she just when he like ignored her for like a while I get why he was he was he was upset he was being like tortured every night like I understand why he was scared to like progress things with Harper but also being ignored sucks especially by someone you just like had a moment with like that like that hurts so I fell for Harper there and I was like Ren what are you doing but while we're on the topic of Ren Ren's insta love was not super insta lovey but it felt like he went from being indifferent about Harper and being like well whatever like I might I mean, if Harper, like, wants me around her, I'll be around her, but I don't really care otherwise, to being, like, in love with Harper. It seemed a little bit fast to me. Harper's arc I loved because I loved by the end she wasn't saying, like, I love you. Like, I loved that, that came later for her because often, like, that happens. Like, that is how, that is how a lot of relationships work. And I really enjoyed that, like, for once, it wasn't like this couple was, like, perfect by the end of it. They were just going to see how things progressed I guess but Ren yeah he did he did fall for her a little bit fast Gray being the heir was predictable I called it I was like there's a there's a long lost kid could it be Gray like <laughs> I mean fairy tales are built on like coincidence a lot of the time and just oh like there's a long lost son is it is he already here maybe and then the ending, yeah, I really, I, I've touched on this, but I really liked the ending. I liked how Harper and Ren um, ended up. I liked the lead up to that. I really enjoyed the action portions of it when, like, Ren is the beast and, like, Harper's running after him. Still don't know why he understood her and became dos docile right away. But, you know, we overlook things, okay? We overlook a few things. I don't know I just really enjoyed this book it was it felt really good to come back to like a YA fantasy that didn't disappoint me because that has kind of been my experience with YA fantasy in the past year or so um and this one really I was worried about this one I didn't expect to like it as much as I did but I really enjoyed it and I highly recommend it if it sounds like your kind of book like if you are a retelling person if you are a YA fantasy type person if you don't need it to be kind of a high epic intricate fantasy all the time if you need something a bit lighter something easy to read highly recommend this one I love this author's work I love her writing style it's so easy to read um yeah I love this book and I I think it's my favorite retelling right now who knows if that'll change um i highly recommend it i'm selena thank you for watching my first video my review um okay well thanks for watching and i'll see you next time bye